Beneath the stars, I entered the forest, machete unsheathed. The idea of a gun rejected early in my search. It wasn't personal enough. I wanted to sever its ability to escape and run my hand over its face. It had no eyes. I wanted to make sure it could see me. I needed it to know it was me who consigned it to death. I pondered the irony of where the hunt would end. Years I searched to unmask the hidden wretch, my obsession. In that time I encountered many a sinful beast, but none so horrible as the eyeless thing that took my wife. Meryl's expression held elegance even in shock, as its shiny, cold, dark arm wrapped around her throat and took her forever. I sought out urban legends, overheard rumors in bar conversations, asked questions no sane person would dare, but none of the things I hunted turned out to be her abductor. I kept notes, made sketches, documented the unknown horrors that live in the wild. Parents tell you monsters aren't real, but the wisdom of a child knows no suppression. Would peace come of its destruction? Has it come to the victims of other felled nightmares? Maybe. Either way, I needed my closure. As I stealthily navigated the woods, I felt dreams and nightmares within my grasp, burning cinders of pain and hate. I'd scar my flesh just to be close, die to touch it. My hands trembled, heart pumped excited blood. A grin spread my chapped lips. I was closer than ever before. Every few steps I stopped to listen for movement. It was no ignorant beast I pursued. It was another hunter, just as cunning as myself, if not more. A rustle to the side caught my breath. It seemed a deliberate tactic, a ruse to draw me in. So I kept still. It was trying to locate me. I waited, and my patience won out. I heard it stalking through the brush and followed silent as the night. Flashes of Merrill's terrified eyes drove nails into my heart, but I pulled them out and left them behind. I had to focus on my prey, else I'd become it. Excitement turned to fear when I felt hot breath against the back of my neck. Somehow it tricked me. Somehow it won. In a last-ditch effort, I turned and swung my blade with blind aim, but its slender fingers caught my wrist. Its black, featureless face moved close to mine. The ebon flesh receded from its skull. From within came rows of pointed teeth. Its entire head snapped like the muzzle of an enraged mongrel. The serrated maw engulfed my skull, but the teeth didn't penetrate, only held firm against my throat. From deep within its gut, a meaty appendage extended and lodged itself in my esophagus. I bit with force, hoping to do whatever damage I could before it killed me. But the flesh was too fibrous. My human teeth did nothing. It shoved itself further into my abdomen. I choked against the thick, sausage-like tube. All I wanted was to scream in pain, to release anything but I could only writhe in agony while my chest hitched in a struggle for life. 